so many things that are preventable that we just we take for granted until we don't have our health anymore. A bit high. That's quite a bit high. <laughs> Three, two, one. My name is Mike Wall, and I'm passionate about exploring health. Come on a journey with me across Newfoundland and Labrador as we learn about wellness here at home. I've learned a lot about health this year. Things that I didn't understand before, but I'm glad I understand now. But there's one thing I do know, and that's diabetes. My PhD looked at the hormones responsible for this condition. One third of Newfoundlanders are either diabetic or pre-diabetic. And if we don't have the condition ourselves, we definitely know somebody that does. But for a disease that's so common, it's poorly understood. There are two main forms of diabetes. Type one diabetes develops genetically when we lack the hormone insulin, which stores sugar and type two diabetes, which tends to manifest as a result of lifestyle. So why is diabetes so dangerous? Well, it's because our brain works almost exclusively on blood glucose, and this energy is used throughout our entire body. When we don't have the right hormones to be able to store it or use this energy source, then it can lead to lots of different problems. For example, type one diabetes was almost entirely fatal for people until the discovery of insulin by a Canadian researcher by the name of Frederick Banting. Type 2 diabetes is very different. We don't lack the hormone that stores it, we actually become immune to it because we've overexposed our body. Compare it to walking in a room that smells like paint. Eventually you don't smell the paint anymore. When you expose your body to sugars in high amounts for long periods of time, your body stops producing insulin as much because it thinks your blood sugar level is normal. Well, having high levels of blood glucose may seem like a good thing because of this energy, but it's actually not. Having too much glucose in our blood can cause lots of damage in our body. Imagine it like a sugar-coated donut. Our blood cell is a hemoglobin ring, and when there's too much sugar in our blood, it binds to these blood cells, and they can bunch up. It ends up clogging up little tiny veins and arteries that are really far away from our heart, and this can lead to the number one cause of limb amputation, kidney failure, and blindness in people. Not everybody learns about diabetes the same way I did, or studies its impact. But my friend Kevin Peters learned about it in a very different way. Back in 2016, December 1st, you know, you're talking three weeks before Christmas, uh, my daughter was diagnosed with type 1 diabetes. Mm. And it was an absolute shock to us. Um, you know, you knew very little about diabetes. Mm -hmm. uh, what I knew about diabetes was, was something that was related to sugar and you couldn't eat sugar. And really that was the extent of it. So, um, you know, we were fortunate enough that uh, we got to the Janeway in time. She was sick, but wasn't, you know, too, too sick. And within uh, a few days in the Janeway, I started to learn more about type 1 diabetes. And unfortunately, there's no cure for type 1 diabetes. Mm -hmm. So uh, to really get my head around what can we do, we can't find a cure for it, uh, I had to start thinking about what can I do to make some kind of contribution? Yeah. How, how do we support the cause? And um, so very quickly found out and, and discovered there's some great organizations out there. There's Canadian Diabetes Association. There's JDRF, the Ju Juvenile Diabetes Research Foundation, and started doing some research and realized that there were opportunities that, although you weren't going to be the scientist, you weren't going to be the doctor, mm -hmm. uh, you could be someone that could help raise awareness, mm -hmm. raise money, and um, ideally provide some support to ultimately finding a cure. Yeah. And so that's really where it started, uh, my daughter being diagnosed. So how did you help her by doing what you did, just learning and helping her with the foods and stuff, or did you do other things? Yeah, so you know, you get the nutritionists and the nurses and the doctors, and they explain all the medical components to that. And a lot of it uh, in the in early days as well is, is almost a different language, right? You just, mm -hmm. You're trying to absorb it all, and you're trying to understand it all, and it just doesn't make sense. So what I found and my wife found was that we wanted to kind of take on what she was going through. Okay. So she could only eat uh, 15 carbs uh, during her snacks twice a day and three meals of 30 grams of carbs mm -hmm. per day. And no sugar, no treats, um, regular finger pricks. So looking at that, she was seven years old at the time. I said, man, I can't let her go through this by herself. Um, I'm gonna give myself type one diabetes, <laughs> right? But not really give yourself, but like... But not really give yourself okay. type 1 diabetes. But I'm yeah. going to act like I have type 1 right. diabetes. And if, if I got that diagnosed, how would my life change? It, you know, and you wouldn't have the choices to do it. So whatever she has to do, I'm going to do with her. Mm. So I literally 
to the day, um, and this is, you know, coming up before Christmas, you know, there's Christmas parties and there's alcohol, there's all the stuff that you, you partake in, in in that time of year. I cut it all out yeah. and started reading every label because I had to for her health and her life depended on that. And so while we're reading labels and understanding and weighing food and measuring carbs for her, did it for ourselves as well. Yeah. And so then you start going, wow, you know, um, notice that my eating habits are changing and mm -hmm. I started to feel a little bit different and you know I poke my fingers as well just to get the feel for it all and um, and as you do more and more research you start realizing that it's certainly manageable mm -hmm. and how it's manageable is how proactive you are in your lifestyle. Mm -hmm. And a lot of things you're doing were what people would have to do with type 2 diabetes when they had to modify their lifestyle without having to be you know insulin dependent. Yeah. So you had some positive results it sounds like when you started to live the same way and, and yeah. change your lifestyle. Yeah so you know, it's amazing how things happen sometimes. I've, you know, I was probably about 20 pounds overweight at the time. And yeah. I always struggle with recognizing it. But I mean, sure. 20 pounds, not a big deal. But I always would like to lose it. And, you know, you lose up, up and down. And, and, um, and I also always had high blood pressure. Yeah. And I was on blood pressure medication since my early 20s. And, you know, here I'm in my late 40s now and still taking blood pressure medication. So within a very short period of time, and it's amazing how quickly this happened, is... Yeah literally counting every carb that I ate, cutting out sugars, um, eating healthy snacks, drinking more water, mm -hmm. and getting a little bit more active. And not crazy exercise routine, just going for a walk every day with my daughter and encouraging her to be a little bit more active. And within about eight weeks, I dropped almost 20 pounds wow. and went back to the doctor to get my blood pressure checked. And, and he said, your blood pressure is normal. Huh. And I haven't been on blood pressure medication since. Wow. So you think about her lifestyle and what she has to do to maintain uh, not only a healthy level of life and quality of life, uh, her life actually depends on mm -hmm. partaking these activities. And sort of the light bulb went off and said, you know what, that applies to all of us though, Mike, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Every person out there, your quality of life is dependent on your lifestyle so many things that are preventable that we just we take for granted until we don't have our health anymore and right. it becomes something that we wish we had a did a better job of dealing with well you realize this and you've sort of shared that message right so tell me about diabetes for a day yeah so in the process i thought to myself wow imagine you could get more people to kind of take on that lifestyle even if it's just for a short period of time mm -hmm. just to see i mean a very short period of time i've learned that you really can have a positive impact on your lifestyle and your health so I came up with this concept of diabetes for a day, which was basically a challenge to people within the community, more so the corporate community was, is how I designed it, to take on the lifestyle of a type one diabetic and do the things that they do. Read your, read your food labels, cut out junk food, eat less sugar, um, drink more water, mm -hmm. get a little bit more active. Nothing complicated, nothing too extreme and invited about 25 business and community leaders to take part for 90 days. Mm -hmm. And uh, the results were amazing mm -hmm. for so many people. So they actually got to learn a, lot, a little bit about type 1 diabetes, type 2 diabetes, but health in general mm -hmm. and the benefits of little changes that could have amazing results. Why did Alec G. Henley care so much about the financial well-being of his friends and neighbours? Why did he spend his days travelling on foot and by coastal boats to teach hard-working folks how to plan and protect to invest in their futures? Alec's family believed that the best way to weather uncertainty was to help friends and neighbours. Over 75 years later, with a history of independence, Alec G. Henley lives on. In the trusted advice we give, the freedom we grow with you. It's time to change how we view healthcare. We're leading the charge in global med tech innovation, saving lives, bringing millions in investments, and creating hundreds of jobs right here in Newfoundland and Labrador. Want to get involved? Visit bounceinnovation.ca. Hi, I'm Sarah Cole with Hickman Select, and at Hickman Select, we offer all makes and models. We even have as traded pieces priced under $15,000. We also deliver anywhere in Newfoundland, including Labrador. Visit us at hickmanselect.ca. Kevin and his family's motivation for starting their organization is inspiring. And as Kevin says, it's all about awareness. Most people don't even know they're at risk. So to increase awareness, we put our heads together and came up with a fun and accessible way for people to see if they have diabetes. 
and June Trapiner from Catalyst Health offered to do the testing. I'm curious to see what we find out. So we're gonna be doing testing on people today. Can you explain what we're gonna be doing and what we're testing? Yeah, so it's a point of care glucometer reading. It's just a quick pinch on the finger right there. Five seconds later on the strip, you've got a reading. And that's a really good picture, a snapshot in time of what your blood sugar is doing right now. Mm -hmm. Of course, that is impacted a lot by if you've just eaten, if you've already got a pre-existing condition like diabetes, mm -hmm. uh, if you've been exercising, those sorts of things can alter the numbers as well. Mm -hmm. um, and they're a little bit different. A point of care is really just that picture right that second versus the kind that you get with a venipuncture, which can give you a fasting blood glucose, which is a little bit more uh, of a process and as well versus an A1C level, which is a three month picture of how your blood glucose has been doing over time. Right, but this is still a good test to say, hey, maybe you need to follow up a bit more with your doctor because something seems out of whack, right? Absolutely, even if you were to just have eaten the biggest sugariest meal possible, you really shouldn't see your blood glucose rise above an eight, nine, 10 level. Yep. That's really indicative of the fact that you need to have some further testing done. Right, so people are coming down, they're being brave, they're getting tested, they get a little moose, and so, so you get one too, just for helping out. Thank you so much. <laughs>
because they kept talking about perils. And I don't understand it because like, oh, my darling, lovely set of perils on you today. Did you just come from church, me ducky? Oh, maybe I don't know what perils are. When it comes to insurance, we'll talk to you in language you'll understand. At Pure and Simple, we believe in three things. Surrounding ourselves with good people, providing a welcoming environment to all, and delivering quality food with the freshest ingredients. It's that simple. So the stats say that one in 10 Newfoundlanders and Labradorians are unaware if they're pre-diabetic or even diabetic. And I'll be curious to see how our results stack up against those stats when we look at how we did today. Before we crunch some numbers, I want to spend some time practicing good health. Motivated by Kevin, of course, exercise has completely changed his life. And by adding in some exercise in your daily routine, you can drastically reduce your risk of diabetes. And these days, you don't even have to leave your living room to get a good workout. My friend Jill Whalen has created an online community where she coaches people on exercise, nutrition, and mental health. Let's see what it's all about. How long have you been doing fitness for now? Like 13 years? Yeah. Like, which is weird because I'm only 20. Yeah, of course. <laughs> I know, it's really strange. We both started extremely young. Really strange. But you were in gyms when I first met you, but now almost everything you do is online. Yeah, I mean, I find that I can connect with more people and connect with people deeper online. When you're in the gym, you've got two or three hours a week. That's not a lot of time to connect on the real coaching that matters outside of the exercises. No, that's true. And you can reach more people. Yeah, absolutely. We're a big community now. Yeah, and I was thinking you guys have grown a lot because of the pandemic because people couldn't go to the gym. You've helped a ton of people through a really rough time. Yeah, for a while there. And we have a variety of our members. It's people, some people that could not go to the gym and now transitioned this way, invested in some home equipment. Then we've got people who probably wouldn't want to go to a gym anyways. And yeah. now they found their solution too. So it's pretty cool. Yeah, it is funny because I think fitness has changed a lot. It used to be so exclusive because you had to go to a gym and there's a lot of pressure for people. But now you can work out from comfort of your home and get just as good of a workout. Yeah, there's always been so many barriers for people and those barriers continue and that's kind of my goal is to remove each barrier that's and wicked. give people a, a safe and productive way to yeah. move forward yeah that's good well there's lots of ways to work out it looks like you're about ready to get into a workout i was going to do a little circuit do you want to join me didn't have a workout today i mean we haven't done this in a while i know <laughs> let's do it all right let's just move our feet to get started light movements there's so many ways you can move your body and you can scale this depending on if you're a beginner, if you're super advanced, if you want to add heavier weight. Mm -hmm. There's so many different things we can do. Good. I know all the cheating oh. techniques on how to take extra break, by the way, so you better watch out. <laughs> well, Mike, when you, I were, learned. when you were training people in the gym, how many breaks did you let them have? Not many, not many. <laughs> all right, how about we squat? You don't have to go too deep. Sit back. That invisible chair back there. Right. And you know what? It helps when you smile. It's science. Oh, really? Yeah. That's good. That's it helped. greatly contributes to your wellness. I can believe that. And your I squats. I believe that. <laughs> A couple more here. <laughs> couple more, and then we're gonna work our guns. Double curl, quarter turn. That's it. Quarter turn. Let's go. Okay. Keep that core tight. Okay. You got it. Gosh. Keep going. Couple more. Couple more. Couple more. All right, what do you say? We shift to an overhead press now. If you sure. want to make sure there's no compression on your low back, yep. stagger your stance. Okay. Here we go. Up. One at a time. Don't walk out your elbows, just straight up. As you know. Hey, listen, I'll take the coaching. Reminders. Everybody needs a coach. Reminders help, and you know what? Take the coach, be coachable, I'm here for it. Yeah. Couple more, give me three. Three, two, and one. Set those puppies down. Let's shake it out again with our fast movements. Okay. You got it. Yep. How many days a week would you tell people to do this? How many times a week? All right, let's squat again. You know what I would say? I would say ease into it. Get a little bit of movement every day. You don't need more than five minutes to right. start. Right. And then the other key is diversifying your movement. Do right. something different. Keep it right. fun. Okay. Keep it light. A variety of movements leads to wellness. So there's no miracle exercise, what you're saying. There's so many options. Find joy in movement. Find something that you love. Yeah. And do that. You don't have to hate your way through this, right? How about some more curls? Sure. Let's do it. That's the key. People think, oh, I have to work out. But once you find something you enjoy, yeah. it becomes a part of your life. Right. You know, that's true. I mean, my workouts have changed so much over the years because I used to lift heavier and I had different goals, right? That's right. But now it's about just basically moving keeping my body loose and limber. 
Absolutely. And not being in pain, because as you get older, you get different injuries. Definitely. Yeah. You know what? As somebody who is, I'm 42 years old. The reason why I work out these days, mental clarity and injury prevention. And everybody has different physical needs too. Right. And you can start. So the, even this type of workout that we're doing today with four exercises, every one of these exercises is scalable and buildable. Right. And you can also go lighter. Absolutely. Or go longer. And body weight only or a couple water bottles or anything at all. Right. Good job. You are killing it. That's good. We got to do this more often. I know. God, I, I get in some shape then, wouldn't I? Can I get some water? Sure thing. Have a drink. Let your heart rate come down a little. Whew. Well, cheers. Cheers, my friend. A little breather halfway yeah. through. Now, I had a question for you. A lot of people that need to exercise the most might have something like a health condition. And yeah. one of the conditions that I see a lot of is diabetes. Yeah. How does exercise help diabetic people? And do you ever work with people with diabetes? Yeah, I have several members actually who are diabetics and it's, it can add a, la a layer of anxiety and fear too because you know, you're managing blood sugar and you're trying to be very careful with that. You wanna feel well. Um, so any type of movement should be part of your diabetic protocol. You're part of living with diabetes. Mm -hmm. I believe it's just as important as a nutrition piece. Keep that body moving. Anything from an aerobic exercise to strength training to intervals like we just did. Yeah, yeah and I think that one of the things that's intimidating for people is they think that to start exercising there's a big commitment. Like you got to join a gym or you got to go buy a ton of gear. Yeah. Like What's your experience with that? Absolutely not. And in fact, one of my four pillars is movement. And that just means move your body. You could get up today and go for a five minute walk. Yeah. You can take the stairs at work. You can do a little circuit here with just body weight only or use your resistance as a couple of water bottles. You don't need anything fancy to get started. That's wicked. But do you know what? What? I feel like this break has been too long. <laughs> I'm getting we good. We got one round to go. I told you I was good at stalling. <laughs> you do know all the tricks of stalling. You learned well over the years. All right. This is our final round. Are you All ready? All right. I'm ready. Let's, Let's do go. it. Okay. Let's go. I feel go. like I'm trying out for the 49ers. Go faster. Go faster. <laughs> See how much fun this is? Yeah. All right. Squat. Let's go. Just as deep as feels good. Don't walk out those knees at the top. We got this. Jeez. Keep up with me, Mike. Keep up with me. Let's go. What was in that water? <laughs> All right, grab your dumbbells. Let's curl. A short period of time gives you a ton of energy. You don't need a long, super long workout. I mean, I bust out a couple of these whenever I got the time. Here we go. Overhead. And five, four, three, two, one. Yeah. Killed it. Way to go. Thanks for joining me. What a learning journey it's been. I've realized that people just don't know a lot about diabetes. We tested 70 people in three hours, and 30% of those people came back with high blood glucose, but only 5% of people knew it was high. That means that people with prediabetes or diabetes couldn't take action because they just didn't know. When we take action to prevent or treat diabetes, we can add five to 15 years to our lives. That means that if that small sample of people that we tested decide to make a change, that three hours of testing could lead to almost 300 years of combined life. What would your result be if you got tested? Maybe it's worth finding out.